Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Janice. So today I want to review a book that I read a while back called Estro Generation by Anthony G.J. I'll link the book down in the description. So this book is about how estrogenics are making you fat, sick, and infertile. If you've never heard of this, I would highly recommend that you listen to my video or go get a copy of the book yourself. Personally, I like to listen to books like this on Audible. So while I'm cleaning or cooking, I can also be learning something at the same time. So I'll leave that link down below. This video is not sponsored. Um, I just want to go over some of the really important things that I learned. I think this could really open your eyes to certain things you might not have ever thought about that could be harming your health. So what is the endocrine system? Well, it's one of the main systems in the human body. It's responsible for secreting our hormones into our bloodstream and regulating them. So when you hear endocrine or endocrine disruptor, just think hormones. So hormone balance is essential in our bodies for maintaining our mood, um, our sex drive, cortisol levels, blood sugar, uh, reproduction, literally everything depends on our hormones. Probably a lot of people think we have more of certain hormones than we actually do. So for example, our thyroid hormones, we have a very, very small amount that is secreted. So even when we're doing one little thing that messes with it and stressing our body out, that can really, really deplete our body of energy. Um, for example, testosterone, people probably would assume, and I used to think this too, that men have a lot more testosterone in their body than women. But when you measure it in liquid form, it's not actually that much of a difference. So you can imagine if you're doing something to harm how much is secreted into your body, it can really, really change how you're feeling. So you really, really want to be mindful of what we're putting onto our skin, what products that we buy, um, also, of course, what we're eating, putting into our body. That's really, really important. So I'm going to go over that stuff with you guys right now. So an endocrine disruptor is anything that messes with your hormones. So remember, when you hear endocrine, think hormones. So they're chemicals that mess with our bodies. These can be man-made or found in natural form, which we'll go over later. And basically, they can affect your brain, your um, reproductive system, your immune response to things, basically everything. It can wreak havoc on your health. So let's get into some of these endocrine disruptors, so things that affect your hormones. So endocrine disruptors, basically when they enter our body, they mimic our natural hormones, but they're not real hormones, but they bind to the cells the same way as our natural hormones would. So what does that do? It causes our own body to stop producing certain hormones or it could send certain organs into overdrive thinking it needs to produce more of something. So basically it just creates an imbalance and this stresses the body out. Overall, you will not be as healthy. So the first thing that can mess up your hormones are phytoestrogens. So that basically means plant estrogens. So this is an example of something that's natural that can mess your body up. So first up is cannabis. It's especially bad if you smoke it, it's going into your lungs. You have to be very mindful because uh, especially marijuana has a lot, a lot of pesticides in it. A lot of people don't know that. There's big reports coming out right now. So, I mean, think of like all those stories about Roundup, you guys, and how it's giving cancer, killing people, I mean, do you really want to be putting it that into your body? I mean, maybe if you're growing it at home and I mean, you know what's going on it, fine. Um, you have to be mindful of flax and soy. These are huge endocrine disruptors. Avoid soy at all costs. It's highly inflammatory. It is super bad. It messes up your hormones. Um, there are fake reports all the time that are put out by people, by doctors, by companies that say soy is safe. It is not safe in any way, shape, or form. To get a peer-reviewed study published, you essentially don't need much. You could get a couple of your friends that are doctors to peer-review it, and it will get published. Companies pay doctors all the time to say something is safe when it's not, so do not use any products with soy in it. Um, flax is not great. It's especially not good if you grind it up. There are safe ways to ingest it. Say if you soak it and um, you bake it, you eat it like with Linjanae's uh, flax seed granola, that is a safer way of eating it. But if you're on the fence about it, maybe just avoid it altogether. Lavender and tea tree oil. So I always thought this is healthy for you. This was like one of the big things I learned in this book. Horrible endocrine disruptors. 
Um, again, lots of reports will say it's safe. You can go on endocrine.org. I will link it below. So it is the Endocrinologist Association, and it will show you that there are studies linking these things to horrible things that happen to the body, especially with boys. Um, basically growing man boobs because they're using scented products. So basically think of like when you're buying like scented body wash, especially with lavender tree tree tea tree oil, think man boobs. Okay. So the next thing that can disrupt our hormones are the mycoestrogens. So basically that is a mold toxin that can grow in basically grains, nuts, seeds, things like that. A lot of the times these molds will grow due to the humidity levels and it's just how those things are stored. So for example, growing up on a farm, I know the grains are stored in silos. So if you don't know what that is, I'll show you here. Um, so basically, you know, the farmer has to be very careful to watch the humidity levels. You don't really know though, I mean, what's happening in the storage transportation. Um, you really, really wanna look for a reputable company that's selling these things, non-GMO, organic, all the way. A lot of times people have peanut allergies or other nut allergies due to the mold levels and the aflatoxins in these things. It's not the actual nut, it's the mold that they're allergic to. So next up is atrazine. So that is a herbicide or weed killer. It is banned in Europe, but it's still used in North America. You also wanna avoid um, glyphosate so it could be on grains like, um, you know, corn, wheat, things like that. So you always want to buy organic and non-GMO to avoid this. So the next thing you want to avoid is alkyl phenols or triclosan. So triclosan is usually put in things um, for its antimicrobial nature. So you're going to find it in soaps, sometimes toothpaste, which is crazy. Colgate Total recently had it in their product until recently. We called them at work but they assured us it was safe. It is not, of course they're gonna say that. And especially you're putting something in your mouth, you can absorb um, something sublingually very, very easily. So you wanna be mindful of that. I've even heard sometimes they put a triclosan in garbage bags. So it's really in a lot of household products. So just look on the label for that. You'll see a lot of toothpaste on the front that are natural, we'll say triclosan free. Benzophenone, basically sunscreen estrogens. So think of anything that starts with benzo, it's bad for you. So use mineral sunscreens instead. Um, basically, you can have a mineral or a chemical sunscreen. The mineral ones are better. They're so the mineral ones are using zinc titanium oxide to protect. The chemical ones have to be absorbed into your body in order to reflect the, the bad um, UV rays. So you want to avoid anything with benzo in the name. So basically you wanna use a mineral sunscreen that has zinc oxide or titanium dioxide um, that will essentially just sit on the top of your skin and reflect the bad rays off. The chemical sunscreens, you have to absorb those bad ingredients and then it works by reflecting the rays. So anything that really starts with benzo or octo, octi, you want to avoid those ingredients. So any sort of food dyes are really, really bad hormone disruptors. So red 40, it also goes by the name Allura Red, red number three. It's in lots of junk foods, candies. So you really shouldn't let your kids eat that stuff. So um, I watched this other video by Dr. Anthony and he was saying that red food coloring is hidden in, I think he said over 40% of products that we would find in a normal grocery store. So that really got me thinking, like, why the hell are they putting that in there? It's banned in a lot of other countries, or other countries will require um, these sorts of products to have a warning on it, okay? There are, uh, there's a popular book back, I think it was written in the like, early 70s. This doctor wrote it, like, Why Your Kid is Hyperactive, and it had to do with food dyes and foods. So anyway, I got thinking. I was like looking at the hand soap at my work that we're required to have. It's any microbial dial hand soap. I might get a different one from my room. And it's a bright neon orange color. So then I looked at the ingredients. Sure enough, there's red food coloring in it. So I was thinking like, why do we have to have this soap neon orange? Why can't we just leave it the natural color, whatever it is, right? So then I was looking up and I was like, what company owns Allura Red? And basically like I traced it back to, it was like a big chemical company that owned it. I think it's a byproduct of the oil industry. Essentially now this chemical company has been bought and um, 
merged into other companies over the years and Honeywell owns it, which is like a huge conglomerate company. I think it's like fortune 100 company. So Honeywell like thermostats, they also make a lot of other stuff. They actually own Allura Red. So I just think something is shady. Like why does that stuff have to be in our products? Anyway, that was just me doing a little research, but avoid food colorings if possible. They actually even put, put food colorings in things like sausages, right? Or hot dogs. Did you know hot dogs would be gray if there wasn't food coloring? So parabens are used a lot of the time to preserve um, beauty, fragrance type things, any sort of product we might use on our skin. So probably a lot of us have seen on our shampoo or conditioner or body wash paraben free. Do we really know what that means? Essentially, you want to avoid stuff that is scented, especially if it's going on your private areas or inside your body you don't need that extra scent uh, a lot of times it's just basically a chemical shit storm um, not all fragrance is bad so if you buy like a very expensive perfume depending on where it's made if it's made in Europe a lot of the times these things are safe I mean if you want to be really safe probably spray perfume on your clothing but be very very careful of not using too much like Axe body spray um, things from Bath and Body Works. Anything that's really heavily scented and it's cheap, it's probably just a lot of chemicals and it's not good for us. So BPA is found in certain plastics and epoxy resins. So the BPA, if we're storing food in a plastic container, it could seep into the food. So I'll just read from my phone. So some research has shown that BPA can seep into food or beverages from containers that are made with BPA. Exposure to it is a concern because of the possible health effects on the brain and prostate gland of fetuses, infants, and children. It can also affect children's behavior. Additional research suggests a possible link between BPA and increased blood pressure. So that brings us to phthalates, which Dr. Anthony said are even worse than BPA and are in tons of plastics. And they're even in BPA-free things. So it's really good to look for BPA and phthalate-free. Next up is EE2. I'll put the real name here because I'm probably going to butcher it if I try pronouncing it. Um, basically birth control pills. It can also be in drinking water because so many women are on birth control when they urinate. It's going obviously into the sewage system. It can't be properly filtered out of the water. So what that leads to is people, if you're not filtering your water when you're drinking it, you can have extra estrogen in your body. So when I make a video like this, by no means am I saying I'm perfect and everything I use is perfectly healthy, but every year I try to do better and better. I have really changed a lot of the products that we use in the house, like as far as soaps, laundry detergents, shampoo, conditioner, I try to buy all unscented. Um, and a lot of other things I've changed over the years too only using glass containers, not on birth control anymore, um, buying a lot more healthy non-GMO organic foods, things like that, doing my liver cleanse. Definitely watch my liver cleanse video that can get rid of a lot of toxins. So you have to remember, I mean, the, um, the toxins are stored in our fat cells. So basically all this bad stuff, when you see someone really overweight, that fat in a weird way, it's trying to protect their organs. That fat is trying to keep the toxic material away from their organs. So in a weird way, it's like attempting to help them, but it's also, you know, secreting fat cells, secrete more estrogen. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle. So yeah, basically I just, I wanted to make this video just um, to maybe open your eyes to a few things that you might not have thought about that might be affecting your health or your body weight. Thank you for watching. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up.